Hello and welcome to this Game Guru video on artificial intelligence range. Now I'm going to demonstrate this really simply by creating the simplest level that I can come up with, which is a start marker, which we are going to arm ourselves with a 1911 gun and some extra health. And we're going to drop in a combatant, so a masked soldier will do nicely. We drop that into the scene and do test game. And so the idea is very simple. We start here, he starts there, we have a weapon. His back is towards us, so it doesn't see us. I'm going to show you another little tip. If you go into debug visuals and increase it to about 50, you get some additional visual information. Now you can see that there's this sort of large arc of highlight and a line. That means this enemy is looking within that region for uh, entry. So if we go into this space here, you'll basically be able to see us. Bang, 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 bang. And eventually we get hurt. But we don't because we've got a thousand health. It's going to take a long time for that to happen. So what we're going to do is make it just a little bit more poignant. In the entity properties, there's something called view range. You can set that to 500. If you apply those changes and press test game again, you'll actually see how we can operate inside and outside of the AI range. So again, we'll set the debug visuals on, and then we go, so we get detected, and watch. I can run out of that range, and then keep outside of the range, and once the enemy reaches the last point they saw you, they'll start looking again, as you can see with this range. But because we are outside of the visual range, they're absolutely incapable of detecting us. As long as we stay outside of this arc, we are completely invisible. And that's the use of what's called the cone of sight, which can be defined both by range and by the angle of this particular cone as well. Just to further prove that point, if we go back into Entity Properties, change cone angle to something like 40, and then go back into Test Game, you'll actually see that when we do visuals, you've now got this cone. So it's not just 180 degrees, it's now much smaller, and you'd have to actually get right in front of the character to actually pick up the detection. And the line is showing the path constantly calculating to make sure that the enemy has the ability to move closer and closer and closer to you. If you happen to be inside that range when before the enemy gets to the end, then the combat continues. But if you can sneak around the corner, hide, by the time they get to where they're going, they can't see you anymore. And the current script doesn't give them any leeway to look left and right as maybe a human would. This is just sort of a basic AI just so you can actually see how these core mechanics work. But of course you could shoot the couch in the back, doesn't take your cannon to that. And of course combat continues, of course, within the cone and the range. So that was one thing I wanted to demonstrate, the idea of cone of sight and the range. But there was also a question raised in the forums, and I just wanted to demonstrate how that works. If we set this character, let's change the name, because I want to refer to this name character later. Change his name to bot, and change the spawn at start to null. Now, were we to play test game now, this character wouldn't show up in the game. Because in level design, one thing you want to do is preserve your enemies, hide them for the most part, and then when you turn a corner or you enter a particular situation, you want to bring these enemies into the game. It helps with performance, and it's generally a good practice for level design as you start learning you know, to create more complicated and more sophisticated levels. So this is what's called a trigger zone, it's pretty typical. And what you can do is give, if used, the name of that entity. And what this does, it will trigger that entity, i.e. spawn that entity. So we put the name of the entity in there, we click Apply Changes. Just so we know where that little patch is, we'll just go and paint onto the terrain. Just reduce the brush size a little bit. Paint a little bit of a, a rocky surface there, and then we'll go straight in. Now right away what we're going to see is that patch we've just painted, but because we're not spawning the enemy at the start, you don't see them. Only when you went to this little patch that they spawn into existence. But only when, again, you can see the cone of sight here, only when you are within that cone of sight will they actually acknowledge that you exist. So we step into the cone of sight, we 
brain registers that you are there and then combat ensues. And a headshot, of course, takes care of them in one. It doesn't always have to be that way if you actually take this and then rotate the guy. And it's called bot the moment, so if we say paste you down and then paste another one, you've actually got two guys, both called bot. So when you spawn the word bot, there's going to be two entities referring to that. And so let's put one uh, here and then one straight in front of you. It's almost like flanking you. So press test game for the third time. And we enter a gravelly patch. They drop in, and because they're facing you, they waste no time. <laughs> you know, you're not creeping up on them from behind. They do a pretty decent job in dispatching the player, and so on and so forth. But headshots, always effective. And so that's how AI corn of sight, range, and actually spawning entities, not at the start of the game, but when you enter triggers on. So hopefully th these few little tips will help you in creating more interesting and performance-friendly levels in the future. So hope this was helpful. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.